Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. You join us in Richard's workshop for a change, not mine. Uh, that's because I'm, I'm here and not there. Yeah, Does I'm that not, make sense? I'm not allowed out of here. No, Dan, this is where we keep him. Look, you can't see that <laughs> chain around my ankle. <laughs> Don't break that chain. It costs a lot of money. Um, yeah, as you've probably seen from the thumbnail and the title, unless you're one of our most eager fans who just clicks immediately on the video uh, as soon as we produce one we are talking about arrow plates um yeah we go straight into it what is an arrow plate why do we need one right well this is a bow um made from you and it's a victorian edwardian bow and you is a particularly soft wood and with the arrow passing the side of the bow every time it can eventually wear a groove into the bow so we put in an arrow plate uh, generally made of mother of pearl which is quite hard material also quite an attractive material uh, if we have a look at this one uh, yeah it's the actual working part is about that much that steeple at the top is just for decoration and this one has shot a lot of arrows and with a bit of luck, you can see, you can silly feel it with your finger. It's made a groove actually in the mother of pearl. So it shot a lot of arrows to actually do that. Yeah, there's a very definite dip. Yeah, probably difficult to pick up, but you, you, can, feel, you can feel it more than see it. But I mean, this is a bow that's what? How old? But well over a hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah, so but I mean that doesn't just show the signs of the age. It's actually that's had some use to have had that dip in it, because you've got another bow there that's quite old as well. Yeah, this is it? probably even older. Uh, this one? is a lady's bow made by a bone of Lemington. Right. Again, mother of pearl, but it just shows that you don't need a huge arrow plate. This one, if we can get into the focus is quite small um oh, that's, yeah. that's better yeah so you don't need a huge one if if you find the arrow is wearing a groove above the arrow plate there's something wrong with your shooting you're lifting the arrow up off your so hand. there's all the if you're coming up here yeah. above it you mean yeah you, yes yeah that that's big enough to cover the arrow um, so that's again nice mother of pearl plate. So what's going wrong there if you're getting marks um, above that arrow plate, above the height of it? What, what's what's going on there? You, well, you've either got your hand too far up and the arrow is resting above the arrow plate. The knocking point is wrong. It's either much too high or too low. If it's too low, the arrow will skip up off your hand. Um, and also a, a bad loose. If you've got a bad loose, the arrow's going to move and lift up. Um, so you can often tell how well a person shoots by just looking at the marks on the bow. Right, either on the arrow plate or above or yeah, round the one yes, side. Yes, often or... you'll see, see marks well above the, the bow. On this one there, there isn't. Because we've seen quite a lot of bows online. Um, people are making massive arrow plates. A very very wide and then sort of inch inch and a half, sort of in length that we've been. We've yeah, been you seeing. don't you don't need that, and um, particularly if you made the mother of pearl arrow plate too long, um, with the bow bending and it doesn't bend too much through the handle, but it does bend slightly. Mm. You're in danger of the actual mother of pearl cracking, mm. uh, so you, you don't want that. You keep them as big as they need to be. That's yeah, all. yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, we got that's different, different, different material. That's different material. Uh, that one's abalone. Let's see if we can see that one. That's uh, abalone, which is again a hard shell material, uh, but it's got lots of colours in it. No two pieces are exactly the same, uh, so you can see lots of different colours: blues, greens, purples. 
really nice material to use. We've got some of the raw materials here. You can obviously see in the background. We'll go through those and show you what they look look like in their approximate raw form. I mean, a lot of these are all cut pieces ready to go, but uh, we'll, we'll go through those in a minute. Yes, yeah, so we haven't brought an actual shell. No, we, we have. have I, I expect a lot of people have seen them. They're sort yeah, of quite yeah. a common thing to find in a seaside shop. Yes, yeah, sort yeah, of that's, that's right. Oh, that's another one. This is one of our bows that uh, we used for uh, have a go archery and it's shot hundreds of thousands of I mean that's of the arrows. reason we're showing you this one is just to <laughs> say look you know the, this has shot more than an average bow yeah. would ever do. This is not made from you it's it's made from lemon wood and um, a lot of the harder woods yeah, you can get away without an arrow plate uh, but with you you need it because the you is very very soft. Obviously going back to medieval times and the war bow made from you they wouldn't have bothered uh, the bows weren't made to last more than a battle and uh, to put a spend time and effort putting a arrow plate in would be totally unnecessary as Richard said this one shot ooh, I don't know don't know how many but we made this in the 90s and we used it at an awful lot of country fairs and events uh, 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 have a go we were there for you know days at a time all day every day and it was being shot by a lot of people just to show the way I don't know how well that that's that's coming up but if you hadn't had the arrow plate in there there would have been a groove in the wood and almost to the point where we wouldn't be able to use the bow whereas this is still usable because it's been saved by that hard that hard shell Yes, and once you get a groove in the bow, then accurate shooting uh, is much more difficult. Mm. So, so it just, just shows the effectiveness of, of the arrow plate, really. Uh, what else have we got here? I think this is another one with a different, just to show a different shape, uh, this one. Yeah, again, that's um, mother of pearl, but it's sort of a, a nice sort of dome shape. And that was actually cut from um, one of these Chinese games counters, which we used to buy and use, but you could get them quite cheaply in days gone by, but I think they're probably slightly more rare and slightly more valuable. So I'm reluctant to, to cut them up because they're, they're nice looking things, um, but just shows the shape is entirely up to you. Uh, one of the other ones here is just a slightly more unusual one. Yeah, you can make them more fancy. Again, that is mother of pearl in the centre, uh, but we've got this uh, hardwood, black and uh, a yellowy colour. It's, it's probably ebony and lemon wood banding around it. Just make it look a bit prettier. Totally unnecessary, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> looks the part anyway. Yeah, it looks good. So uh, what pieces have we actually got here in our stock of bits? Uh, mother of Pearl. These are sheets of Mother of Pearl. Quite a large sheet actually. And we can cut goodness knows how many arrow plates out of that. Um, doesn't always come in that size obviously. Uh, we've got some pieces here which are a different colour and these have got all sorts of colours within them. These are pieces we got from an old chap who used to do, uh, he was a cabinet maker, did the fitting out on the Queen Mary and these obviously slipped into his kit bag when he was leaving uh, the ship having finished his work and there were pieces left over so we bought them from him and I don't imagine there's too many pieces like this around now with all these fantastic colours in. Not, not unless you go and raid the Queen Mary. Not unless you do that. Are those pieces so there's other other pieces, yeah, well. there's diff different, um, each each piece is slightly different, yeah, they're different nice colours, things. different colours in them. Just gives that little touch of difference to the bow really, mm. makes it individual. So these gaming counters are the same? The, yeah, these are the gaming counters. Again, they are made from 
mother of pearl. A little fish. And there's a, not an oblong one there. Yeah, they've got interesting patterns and everything on there. Yeah, you, you can still get hold of hold of these, but it it, it just seems a pity to uh, to actually cut them up now. So we've stopped doing that. Uh, you can get hold of bits of mother of pearl. We do sell some. We'll show you what we've got later on. Um, but jewellery. Um, this was um, something we found in. A charity shop, I think. It's a, a, a necklace with a, a chain attached to it. Mm, it's lovely. Yeah, I've stopped. <laughs> I've stopped wearing. You stop this. wearing, stopped that, wearing right? this one. So, <laughs> so we be. So you can find something like that for probably hardly any money in a charity shop, and you can cut it up. When you are cutting this, whether it's this mother of pearl or ab abalone, which is this more likely this is. Don't breathe in the dust. Just don't breathe. Don't breathe in the dust because <laughs> if it gets in your lungs, it will cut your lungs up. Yeah. So always wear a mask. Mask, extraction, you, do it outside. You can cut it with a small junior hacksaw, no problem at all. But yeah. please don't breathe in the dust. No, do it Do it anywhere other than indoors if you can help it. Yeah. Uh, and I think yeah. particularly the abalone. I yeah. think it's got um, arsenic or something in it. You might need to look that up. Um we did show you some abalone. This is uh, abalone. Again, lots of different colours in it. Swirls, no, two pieces of the same. Oh, they're amazing, aren't they? A oh, really nice one there. That's even... Yeah, that's... Yeah. Again, makes each bow just that little bit in, individual. Yeah. Fabulous pieces. And say they are all, dif all different colours. That one, what's that one? Well, that's sort of a green, more of a green sort of pattern. With... Yeah, it's almost got like that oil on the on the road that you see sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. got that sort of feel to it. Yeah, it's all purples and yeah, really good. It's almost a colour you can't replicate. It's sort of yeah. Look at, look, look at that. One of those sort of nature's colours yeah. thing. You know, it's fabulous uh... colours. Um, they cut just cut them. I mean, we often cut them to a a, a simple. Uh, whoops! Just a simple um, triangular shape like that, or you can cut that sort of Victorian steeple shape. Cut it to what you like, but this doing it this shape, you only need two cuts in the bow. And we do we to slip. Well, yeah, <laughs> but we we knife. do these by hand. These aren't we aren't cutting them to shape by a you know with a, a router or anything like that. These are hand cut. Yeah. And then they're hand fitted. We've done a video on fitting them and actually making the arrow plate. I'll include those in the link below. If you look in the description box, you'll see the link to the videos. If you want to have a go at fitting your own, I'll show you show you how to do it. Uh, there's another bit there, like a. I don't know what that was. A, uh, buttons are the other thing you can get. Yeah. You can get buttons. This is obviously a large button type thing. Again, from a charity shop. I mean, the, the, some like these, I, I found a bag that was made uh, sort of bits that sort of size. Um, and it was like a hand, lady's handbag. And it just had a whole load of pieces that size. Um, it was probably, I don't know, 25 centimetre by 15 centimetre high bag, small clutch bag. And it was just covered in these pieces and I was just able to take them off. And, and use them so that it, you can find this sort of stuff if you if you're lucky and keep your eyes open as as richard says yeah also we've got um ivory piano keys and we're not 100 percent sure whether uh, it's uh, politically correct now to use ivory right, which is why we don't <laughs> we, we haven't used <laughs> we it use but it. We, we were given these some time ago so we haven't we haven't used it um you wouldn't know whether it was ivory or bone, although ivory does have a a pattern in it, a sort of a grain within it, so you can tell the difference between ivory and bone. It's probably not picking up very well on the no, camera, I'll see if I, I don't can, think. See if I can get any closer. It's not very easy with this stuff, but yeah, you can see just a bit of patterning in there. Yeah. I'm sure someone uh, more knowledgeable than us can let us know about that. But there we are. 
No, I was chased by that African element. element. You were chased by element. an African element. <laughs> an African elephant. You were chased by lived, an African lived element. In, yeah, in our little uh, Ford uh, Escort, we were charged by a, a big bull elephant, and we had to uh, put the foot down pretty quickly. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, what else have we got? Um, oh, pieces that we sell, um, which are little squares of mother of pearl so they're easy to cut you can get a couple of arrow plates out of each one yeah you get two out of those uh, again junior hacksaw just cut down the center again don't breathe in the dust be very careful and you can then shape it to whatever shape you want um, these are quite a plain color but they do have a pattern in them which is probably not picking up very well on the camera let's see if that one's better that's got some you can Let's probably see, if I can see there's move some a bit closer maybe you might be able to see it yeah you see a bit yeah. of the pattern in there but they're nice they're nice pieces they're nice and flat which is good um they're about the right sort of size for easy yeah they're the right thickness so you just, um, just cut them in half and you'll get two two out two of them side plates. by side so there we go um i think that about covers uh, what we've got yeah um but useful to put in a bow, particularly if it's a bow from you, gives it that finishing touch, and you know you make sure that that bow is going to survive for a hundred years, like some of these bows have. At least not necessarily shootable anymore, but um, it's it just saves that bow from getting that groove in it. Yeah, which is which is good, which is yeah. what we want. Yeah, and then if you are making a Victorian English longbow, then that's kind of sets it apart from other types of bows because it was a traditional thing to have yeah. in, in, in the Victorian yeah, bow. Yeah, we are talking about the Victorian sporting sporting bow. We're not talking about the bow from the Middle Ages. No. We're, talk, we're no, talking no. about it's what the... the Vic modern, the modern English long yeah, bow. Yeah, what the Victorians and Edwardians did in their bows uh, that are still the type of bow that shot in competitions today. Mm. Well, there you are, folks. As I say, if you're interested in having a go at making your own, there is links to the videos below. Hopefully they're of good enough quality to, well, at least to give you an idea of how to do it and talks you through the processes, how to cut the recess into the bow, how to set the, the arrow plate in and glue it in and finish it off afterwards before you do your handle. As Richard said, please be careful when working with this material. In fact, any natural materials, I mean, you're working on a bow, a U-bow, any time you're working with wood, please do wear a mask. Um, we can't hold your hand, but we would advise it if you please, please do. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested, we sell the bits and pieces, as Richard said, which is a link to our website is also below. If you want to see more of these videos of us going through old stuff that we've got in a box, <laughs> then please do hit like, comment below, and hit the subscribe button, which is probably covering his face now. And it's probably a video up here, probably the one that I was talking about covering my face. There you are, folks. We'll see you again soon.